Well, I thought this one might be an interesting case study. This unit got shipped into me from Washington and I hand loaded the mechanism down part way. I have the power removed from the unit right now and I'm gonna turn the power on and I get a clock display and the fan does run and then stops and I just show dashes on the clock and it shows the tape is in. So if I power this unit up, it should try to eject it, but it does absolutely nothing. So I'm suspecting it's got a shorted capacitor on the capstan motor circuit and a bad transistor, which is a pretty common problem on these units. If the cylinder motor won't run, the capstan motor or the loading motor won't run because they're all run basically off the capstan drive IC. So let's rip this thing apart and do some tests. All right, folks, here's where I'm at. The VCR powers up and then shuts down about one second later. I went ahead and checked all the power supply caps. I did find a 100 microfarad cap that was like 1.2 ohms. I went ahead and replaced it. And just as a safety precaution, I went ahead and replaced the 4700 6.3. That I always do. I did tear this thing apart and clean the mode select switch just in case that was the problem. So I'm looking at pin 80 right here, VCR power safety, and it gets its supply from this transistor right here, Q1056, and it's labeled P on five volt number two, and it goes several places. So let's go ahead and check pin 80 with the voltmeter. So I'm on pin 80, and if I turn the power on, I get absolutely nothing. I do get a red LED for about one second. So why am I missing my P on five volt number two? That is the question. I need to go ahead and find Q1056, make sure I have my 5.2 go into the collector and that I have my switching on 5.9 on the base and why do I not have anything on the emitter? So Q1056, let's find that guy. Okay, so here is Q1056 right here. So this is gonna be the base. Let's go ahead and power the unit on. And I see my 5.9 volts, absolutely perfect. This will be the collector. Should be my always five volt supply. It is absolutely great. This will be the emitter right here. And I get nothing on the emitter. So let's go ahead and put this on ohms. And I'm seeing a three and a half ohm short to ground. Where could that short be coming from? So let's follow this out and see if there's a little capacitor that goes to ground somewhere. I'm betting that's gonna be the problem. So after following the schematic a little bit farther, I came back to right here. Main four of seven, power on five volt number two. So let's take a look at that schematic. So there is power on five volt number two. It comes in, it goes through what they have an indication of a coil, but it says just a wire, a 0.022 to ground and a 220 microfarad 6.3. I'm gonna bet that's the culprit right there. C1466, I just need to find it now. Okay, so I have found C1466, it lives right here. So one side of it is 3.3 ohms. The other side is 3.4 ohms. I'm gonna go ahead and unsolder one lead of it and see if my resistance comes back to normal. Okay, one lead is unsoldered. So let's go ahead and measure the pad right here. And I'm seeing 0.8 ohms. And now I'm seeing 785 ohms. So that capacitor definitely is bad. So if I measure just this lead, I should see 785 and I do. So that is the ground lead that I did on solder. So next, we just need to go ahead and gain access to this thing that lives underneath the mechanism. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and pull this screw as well as the one over here underneath the ribbon cable and change that cap out. or we'll probably have to put a new transistor in it. And I think this thing is gonna be back on the road. Well, there is the culprit. Let's go just to an ohm test across the capacitor. And I'm seeing 0.8 ohms. As you can see, I'm not touching the leads together. 0 0.8, 0 0.9 ohms, that thing is bad. Well, let's go ahead and grab another 220 at 6.3, pop this thing in here, change that transistor out, and I think this thing is gonna be golden once again. Okay, new capacitor is installed. Let's go ahead and check the emitter of this transistor, and we should see about 785 ohms. And we see 786, I'm perfectly happy with that. Remember last time it was like three ohms to ground. So next let's go ahead and pop a new transistor in here. And like I said, I think this thing is gonna be good. Okay, I have the unit loosely assembled. Let's go ahead and apply AC power. And I have a clock display, nothing else. Let's hit the power button right here. And the unit does actually turn on and stay on. Let's see if it'll load a tape.
And yes, it did load a tape and I do have a monitor connected. It is doing auto tracking right now. Let's make sure it runs more than seven seconds before it shuts down to test the real rotation sensors. Well, once again, I'm going to use that term absolutely perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and do a VCR tape path cleaning as well as a DVD optical pickup cleaning. And I will check the caps in the DVD recorder and replace those as necessary also. And then finally, I'll do a DVD record test. I'll copy a VHS tape over to DVD, burn it to the disc, finalize the disc, and make sure that it plays the disc back in preparation for shipping this unit back to my customer up in Washington. All right, so I went ahead and checked all the caps on the DVD recorder board, and I did find these 10 capacitors are bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace those out and clean the optical pickup. I've already done the VCR service and get this thing ready to ship back to my customer in Washington. All right, so I did contact the customer and gave him the option of either replacing or not replacing the 10 questionable capacitors on the DVD recorder board. And he chose to go ahead and replace all 10 of the questionable capacitors. So I went ahead and did that. So let's go ahead and clean the optical pickup. Even though that he states he did clean it, I'm just gonna make sure I'm already this far into this unit. I just want to make 100% sure this thing is going to be just fine. And it does look absolutely perfect. So I think I'm not even going to touch this thing. It is in excellent condition. I don't want to risk stripping the optical coating any further than what's already been done. Every time you rub these things, it has a chance of stripping that optical coating off the laser. So I'm just going to go ahead and reassemble it right now. I've got a VHS tip ready to duplicate over to the DVD. So we'll get that started. Okay, so I have a recorded DVD that I recorded on another customer's Magnavox ZV427 or ZV457. Have the disc in it. Just gotta go ahead and close the drawer. We'll let it read the table of contents and see if it actually plays. And it did read the table of contents just fine. Let's go ahead and hit play and let it play for just a moment. We'll skip forward a few tracks. And it appears to be playing absolutely perfectly. So next I'm gonna go ahead and stop this disc and I will put a blank DVD-R in it and let it go ahead and read the table of contents. Then we'll try to make a test recording. I do have a recorded VHS tape in here that is one hour and 30, give or take a couple of minutes long. So we'll go ahead and see if it's gonna go ahead and record the complete disc. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop the disc out and we'll pop the blank disc into it. And let's see if it recognizes that it is a DVD minus R. And it does know that it is a minus R DVD. So next I need to go ahead and stop this and go into the setup and we'll go into general setting. We'll set the clock for the correct date and time. Currently it is December 16th and the year of our Lord 2021 and the time is 7 50 p.m. So next I'll go into recording. I'm gonna choose auto chapter every five minutes. Auto finalize when the disc is full. Dubbing mode, I wanna make sure this is on the VCR to DVD dubbing and make recording compatible on. Okay, I think we are set. But first I wanna make sure that I have this in the one and one half hour mode. Nope, it's in the six hour mode. I'm gonna change it. Well, I don't have that option. So I'm gonna put it in the two hour dubbing mode. So it'll leave about 30 minutes of the disc blank, but that'll be perfectly fine. Let's hit the dubbing button. VCR to DVD dubbing. And there we go, the tape is playing. The DVD is recording. So let's come back in about an hour and a half and see if we have a successful copy.
All right, so the disc has finished recording. Let's go into setup. Disc edit. Let's go ahead and finalize the disc. And it did appear to finalize the disc completely. So let's go ahead and open the drawer. Reclose the drawer. See if it reads the table of contents and plays the disc. And it did load just fine. Let's go ahead and select the playback title. There it is playing. Let's go ahead and skip forward a couple tracks. And it's playing absolutely perfectly. I love it. Well, there is another successful repair on a Magnavox ZV427MG9A. I certainly hope you enjoyed the video on the repair of the Magnavox DVD VCR. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I do have a full-time job and I do this in my spare time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.